Hey guys, Brett Weiss here. Welcome to another video. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out a lot. So today I want to talk about five things that the critics have wrong about the Intellivision Amico. Just in my opinion, uh, there seem to be critics out there that want the Amico to fail for some kind of personal reason, some personal vendetta against it, or whatever the case may be. There are some people out there that don't seem to want to give this console a chance. Either they don't like the Intellivision, or they don't like Tommy Tallarico, or they think the Intellivision just wasn't an important console back in the day. But I think there are sp five specific things that I find interesting and potential filled about the Amico that uh, critics just, before the Intellivision Amico was even released, before they've had a chance to play it, I think they're just writing it off and just not giving it a chance and they're already saying it's a terrible console before they've had a hands-on demonstration. And some of these critics have had a chance to play it and chose not to for whatever reason. And I'll just uh, out front, I haven't gotten to play it yet, but I do think it's going to be an interesting console. Now I am very biased towards that wanting to, this to succeed because I did grow up playing the Intellivision. Um, when I was 14 years old in 1980, I had a 16 year old girlfriend that had an Intellivision that her, you know, her family had one and we played that and had a blast. That was awesome. I had other friends that had the Intellivision, loved the console. So of course I want the Amico to succeed. Also, I'm friends with Tommy Tallarico. Oh, that's me. <laughs> and yeah, I want him to succeed. I want his company to succeed, the head of Intellivision uh, currently. And I want, uh, I want the Amico to succeed, you know, just being a big retro gamer. So yeah, I am biased. I'll admit, am I a shill? Maybe. Regardless, there are five things about this console that I think the critics just frankly have it wrong. So let's get to it. Number five, the look of the console. Now, is it my favorite console design? No. Do I think it's a bad design? No. I think it's not bad. Some people say it looks like a foot bath or, or just you know, not much like a gaming console or whatever, or just some, you know, just generic electronic thing or whatever. I think it's small. I, I kind of like the look of it. It's small. It's unobtrusive. It has kind of a retro look, and I'm intrigued by the uh, lighting that Tommy talked about uh, in one of their promo videos, you know, about how it's going to light up depending on what game you're playing, you know, just some colored lights on the console itself. I think that kind of sounds interesting. That could look really neat in your living room. I don't have a problem with the look of the Intellivision Amico. And in fact, I like it better than uh, the PlayStation 5. A lot of people have criti criticized that monstrous console. It's just big and it takes up a lot of space and it's kind of awkward looking. And But I, I, I think the Amico, I just think it's just kind of kind of blend into the living room. I really don't have a problem with the look of it. That's, so that's number five. I don't think it looks terrible. Number four, the price. Yes, it does cost $250. You can order pre-order the Intellivision Amico right now for $250. And I don't think that's completely unreasonable for a new console. Um, the original Intellivision was $275 to $300, depending on uh, what source you checked. I always had it in my mind that it was $300. That's my memory of it, which was way above our... Uh, there's no way my parents were going to get me Intellivision back in the day. But I did play it a lot at my friend's house, so that was nice. But in today's dollars, an original Intellivision, that would be over $1,000. $300 to today would be almost $1,100. So I don't think it's completely unreasonable to pay $250 for a new uh, game console. Now what helps with this and what makes it even more reasonable, it comes with five games plus downloads for the console. I believe they said three to $8 each. Very, very wallet friendly. So overall with the pricing, I don't have much of a problem with the Amico. Now if you look at the Xbox Series S, the uh, download uh, Xbox, you know, you've got the Series X that takes physical media. You got the Series S that's just downloads. Now you might say, "Wow, for just fifty more dollars, you can get an Xbox Series S." I would understand that, you know, if you're really into modern games and that kind of thing, perfectly understandable. But personally, I'm more excited about the Miko because, you know, being a retro gaming great gamer and all, I don't mind the two hundred and fifty dollar price point. I gladly paid it, and especially as as cheap as the games are going to be. No problem here. And, and you know, in television, it's a much smaller company than Microsoft. So their game, you know, their console is going to, you know, they kind of have to put it at a certain price point, whatever's going to work for them based on how many projected sales they can make. So there you go. And um, 
homebrew games. People are paying, you know, for physical media, fifty and sixty dollars a piece for homebrew games. You know, you get a few of those, boom, you got your Namiko. You know, a similar price point. You buy four, or five, six uh, physical media homebrew games, and boom, that's about the price of a Miko. Not that big of a deal. And if these remakes of Astro Smash, Moon Patrol, Shark Shark, and these other you know, in television and other gaming properties. If these are gonna be awesome on the Amico, if they're gonna be a ton of fun for single players and multiplayers, I do most of my gaming solo. So if these are great one player modes of these games and they're a ton of fun and they keep coming out with more games uh, based on the old properties, the old IPs, and they're a lot of fun, it's gonna be well worth my money. So I have no problem with the price. Number three. Uh, a lot of critics are saying right out of the gate that the Amico is guaranteed to fail on the marketplace. Now, to be fair, there is no way to know currently whether the Amico is going to be a big success or not. I thought the Wii U was going to succeed. I played it uh, ahead of the console release. I had got an invitation from Nintendo to go out to Dallas and play it, uh, an advanced console. And I thought it was great. I loved it. I loved the, you know, the game, the, the big screen on the controller, uh, the games they demoed, they just seemed cool to me. I thought it was gonna be a big success, and it was sort of marketed improperly. People thought it was just an extension of the Wii. It was a weird name, and, it, and getting a second controller was problematic and all of that. But anyway, I thought the Wii U was gonna be a success, and when I saw the commercial for the Nintendo Switch, I thought, I had no idea it was gonna be as successful as it is. I, th I mean, it's Nintendo, what do you think is possible? So it surprised me and a lot of people with just how successful it is. And the Wii U disappointed and surprised some people by just not selling very well. So I have no idea. I may be wrong about the Amico, it may fail, but I think it's gonna do really well. Number one, they have a great marketing team and Tommy is tireless with promoting it and it's already generating a ton of excitement. Of course, the big thing is gonna be, is it gonna have mainstream appeal? Are moms and kids gonna be getting this system? Are parents gonna be buying this system for their kids? And are kids gonna want it? Time will tell, but I have faith in the company and in television that they're gonna, you know, they're already promoting it to like, you know, parents groups and things like that. And they're, true marketing push really hasn't begun until the actual rollout of the console. So it'll be really interesting to see how it sells. You know, whether you're pro or anti Amico, it's gonna be fascinating to see how many units this thing moves and just how, how excited people are gonna be when it launches and just, you know, like uh, when you go into Walmart, you know, and you see the Amico on store shelves, that's gonna be really fascinating just to see how that goes over with the general public. I think it's gonna succeed, but hey, like I said, I'm a little biased, but hey, I think it's gonna be a neat product and I think it's gonna do well. Number two, the controller. Now the controller on a console that you've never played is always a concern, no matter what it is, because until you have that controller in your hands and you're playing a game and you've played it for a while and you've played different kinds of games, you don't know how well the controller is gonna do, uh, or how it's gonna fit you, or how you're gonna feel about it, how it's gonna control the on-screen images. You just don't know. So it's always a slight concern. However, I am I think it's gonna be a pretty good controller. And the reason is because it's, it, it has a variety of functions and ways you can use it. And what sold me on it is that you can turn it like this and do this, like you would an NES and like the Nintendo Wii. Like you can hold a Wii controller like an NES controller and sort of play it old school. Apparently you can do this on the Amico in sort of similar fashion. That works for me for the old school games. And then plus you've got all these other features on the controller that seem really interesting and I'm definitely willing to give it a try. I'm not gonna automatically say it's gonna be great, but I'm definitely not gonna say it's automatically gonna be bad and I won't know for sure until I play it. But again, I'm optimistic about this. Very optimistic, absolutely. I don't think it's gonna, the controller is gonna be a deal breaker as far as um, whether it's gonna be a good console or not. I think it may work pretty well. Number one, and this is the insult you hear more than any other about the television Amico. These are just mobile games. These are just games you can play on your phone. Well guys, I hate to break it to you, but in television Amico, is a console that you play on your television set and you can gather your friends and family members for multiplayer games. The last time I checked, that wasn't really possible on a mobile phone. 
So hey, these are not mobile games. Now, some of them may be similar to mobile games, some of them may be based on mobile games, and you might have similar experiences as far as just like, you know, card games or whatever might be similar. But <laughs> these are not strictly mobile games. The, the comparison, I think, is off because you are playing these on a big TV. <laughs> you know, if you have a big TV and you gather your family around in the living room, it's a different experience. So, so for me, when I go to my Intellivision and I sit down to play my original Intellivision, when I play Astro Smash, I'm not thinking, eh, this is just a shooter similar to what I could get on a mobile phone. No, I'm playing a great old game that I really enjoyed back in the day and still enjoy. When I'm playing Las Vegas Poker and Blackjack, do I just think, oh, I could just play cards on my phone? Never, it never even occurred to me until all this Amico criticism. When I'm playing Space Armada, do I think, oh, I could just play a Space Invaders clone on my phone, I never think that. I kick back in my chair, I get the Intellivision control disc, and I play some Space Armada and love it. Snafu, what could be more simplistic than Snafu? Check it out, yeah, you've seen games like this on your cell phone, but never once have I played Snafu, a game I still enjoy and thought, oh, I'll just play this on my phone. It just, it, I, the, the two don't overlap like they seem to for so many people. Just because you're playing a game that's simple, just because you're playing a game that's old school, that's retro, that only has a couple of buttons, that doesn't necessarily equate with a phone. Now, maybe you had to grow up with the Atari and the Intellivision and ColecoVision, the Bally Astro K, the Arcadia 2001, the RCA Studio 2, and on and on and on. Maybe you have to be from the day to fully comprehend the fact that this isn't a cell phone system. This is a game console you hook up to your television set. Shouldn't be that difficult. All right, guys, these are five of my reasons that I think the critics have it wrong about the Intellivision Amico, and I hope I have it right. I have confidence in the console. Now, just to reiterate, it is perfectly acceptable to criticize a console before it comes out, but be careful what you say. If you say, I know it's gonna suck when you haven't play it, played it, if you say you know the controller sucks when you haven't used it, when you say you know it's not gonna sell well, when there's no way to know that, that's not the way to go about it. it you could say, well, I, I'm really not much into simple games. I prefer 3D, uh, first person shooters or whatever. Fine, it's not for you. You can say, oh, well, I don't think it's gonna do well because I think the, all the emphasis is gonna be on the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. Fine, that's perfectly acceptable just to say sort of normal critiques, but this, personal slams against the Amico as though you want it to fail. I think that's a little wrong-headed. And once again, I am biased. I hope this system succeeds. Perhaps I'm a bit of a shill, but I proudly wear that as I do this shirt. Anyway, big time retro gaming here who grew up on the Intellivision, playing at friends' houses, and then getting my own later into the 80s. So boom, big Intellivision fan. And I hope you guys are too. And let me know in the comments, what do you think the critics have wrong? And what do you think the critics have right about the Intellivision? Amico, I just think it's kind of wrong to overly criticize or to just be super negative about something that just really hasn't come out yet and that it seems like a cool system to me. Anyway, before I gush any further, I'll let you guys go. Thank you for liking this video. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. I will talk to you guys later. Peace out. Television. The Intelligent Home Video System. Intellivision turns your TV set into a family entertainment center. Television. Intellivision. It's a lot more fun and a bigger challenge. You are there. No game plays the same way twice. Television. More realistic. See how the players move. Listen to the sound effects. The roar of the crowd.